Okay, so I'm redoing this video because the previous video, the mic was too low. Um, I didn't realise in my headset it was blaring on a normal telly. <laughs> it was really low. So I'm redoing it. Anyway, obviously I've not uploaded in a couple of years. Uh, but obviously I still update gamers, the station and the artwork and stuff in the background. Um, and I help when I can. So, this I'm just going to show you what I've done. What's been added on the latest test builds. Um, and what's been going on. So let's start. So here I've just got a YouTube um, profile that I just created I've never used. So we'll log in. So quite a lot's changed <clears throat> since the stable and you know the older builds. Um, there's more views now. There's four synopsis views. There's different artwork, um, you will need the latest artwork installer to for all the views to function. Um, if you're in a one, uh, 128 megabytes worth of RAM, you get extra features, so you'll get higher res artwork. If you've got the latest art, and start again, if you've got the latest artwork installed, you'll be able to use higher res artwork. So, you know, it looks a lot cleaner, looks a lot nicer. Uh, but due to 64 megabytes, you know, I need to keep the, you know, the default resolution quite low for thumbnails. But anyway, so as you can see, it just looks the same. If you've been using it for a while, it looks the same. Um, now, Synopsis is used by default. So if it finds the default.xml, it will automatically parse it and use the information from it. And it will display it on screen, depending on the view you're using. So... As you can see here, there's no synopsis, there's nothing. But if we go to the views, we'll get the four top views, which will show information. So pick this one, you get information. This one, you get information. And as you can see, you know, it's nice looking. Um, this view, this view are based off a uh, skin for Cody. Now it's not released, I think it's just concept. But I liked how it looked, so I incorporated the own version of it into Gamers. Um, can't remember the name of the skin, so I apologise. But it's on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> but I had to add some features in, so for instance, you can see the Xbox artwork installer text. I had to add um, bottom alignment for text boxes and stuff like that, so that I could actually get this. So that larger names don't float above. You know, just some of the other things that I've added. Um, so, obviously, we get a fan art and stuff, but let's enable resources, because that's what we always use. Um, and I like the blurred background. So, now that Synopsis is now part of the system, it's part as default, you can just press Y, and it brings up the Synopsis window, which is its own window. There's no loading, there's no nothing, it's just instant, and you're there. And you get all the same stuff as you did with the previous script. Uh, you actually get more now than you did with the previous script. So as you can see the higher res artwork there will cycle between the front cover and the back cover because the back cover is new. Um, and if you've got 128 megabytes worth of RAM the front cover, the higher res one that you see here, will be used for posters which just makes it look a lot nicer. Um, so Oh, need to change the view because right so let's load into games I'll pause because I should have done this beforehand and I wasn't thinking okay and we're back and it's done right so let's just clean this up so it's nicer looking right so I'll change the different view so let's check out we'll go with this view You've already seen it, but we'll see it in this view. So, just a nice poster view. It's, you know, nice animations, effects. Um, we've now got the fan app view, which is the default fan app view. <clears throat> um, it uses new artwork. So, if you update to this and you don't have the new artwork installed, you will just get the usual grey background with the control pad. Um, this uses specific artwork. Unless, well, 
unless you're on 128 megabytes of RAM, then it uses the full size fan art image. Um, but you can also change some of the view options. So we can enable screenshots. And what that does is after so many seconds, it will start cycling through screenshots. So it just gives it a nice kind of look, you know, varying look. Um, I, personally, I don't use the screenshots. Um, maybe some people do, I'm not entirely sure. But it gives you a nice, you know, it's nice. Um, now, there's also, I'll just say that, there's also a full screen fan up. And you can just cycle through. And what will happen after five seconds, it will show you some synopsis information. And it will give you rating, with, um, genre, year it was released, etc. And it will also tell you your play count, so how many times you've ran the game. If you have trainers enabled, it will also pop up a wee icon to say that you've got trainers for this game as well. So, other view, which is my favourite, is this view. Now this view is just extremely simple, but to my eyes it's lovely. Not on a big screen, it's nice. Especially with the 128 megabyte Xbox, it's all crisp and clean. Um, <clears throat> And as you can see in the background, you've, I've running the blood fan up. That's my preference. I, I like that. So when you press Y, it fades in to the full resolution artwork. And it just gives a nice effect when you go back in and back out. Um, if there's previews, I'll right. play the preview as you can see. Um, obviously you get images as well. And previews I need to fix. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of them might... I used FMPEG to auto-crop the videos when I was processing them for the Xbox. It broke some of them, so I'll need to sit and go through the multi-fix, the ones that are broken. They're not the play, they're just zoomed in a bit. Um, but yeah, so we've got the text list, which some people out there like the text list. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, you can obviously disable the fan art if you want your wallpaper to show through, or you can have the full resolution. Again, I like the base of the blood one, it looks nice. Also uses less RAM, which is handy. Um, I'd also removed some views, so views that weren't really used, I've never seen anybody use them. Nobody ever, nobody's even said anything, so just cleaned up, because I'd, I'd like 21 views. So it was quite a lot. <laughs> um, so now, I don't know how many there is, but there's a few now. I can't have a poor count. It's late. Um, but anyway, uh, back to my favourite view. So, for instance, um, another thing is you can now rename the synopsis titles. So it won't rename the file in the, the default.xml, uh, but it will rename it in the database. If you want to, so say for instance, Aragon, I want to change its name, I can go to edit title, I can change its name. Now what this will do is that will change the name in the database because the synopsis naming is enabled. <clears throat> what, I'll do, what I'll do in a minute is I'll show you that if you change it to XBE, you can then change the XBE naming, or if you disable the synopsis naming, sorry. But if you want to make it permanent for synopsis, then you just edit the default.xml and then you would pick refresh this content information and what that will do is it will update this game's information in the database with whatever you've changed in the xml, the default.xml under the resources folder. Um, I'll just show you, I could have just pressed the white button. Um, if you watched the previous video you would have seen that the disable high resolution artwork wasn't there. Um, I, I've just made it uh, be present now on 64 megabytes, but you can't use it. So it'll only be enabled if you've got 128 megabytes. Uh, but anyway, we'll go back. So if you don't use synopsis naming, you'll see that the games all have moved about um, because they no longer use, they're not organised by the synopsis names now, they're organised by the XPE names. So as you can see, we're now highlighted Major League Baseball. <clears throat> um, and if we move down, we've now got Aragorn again. But this time, we've got Edit XP title. And if I edit this, that will actually change the title inside the XPE. 
and the title inside the database. So yes, that's that. Um, I like synopsis name, so I keep that enabled. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you quickly the settings menu. Again, if you had watched the previous video I uploaded and you could hear me, you would have noticed that some stuff wasn't working. Yeah, I've fixed all that now. Um, so, context menu buttons. That wasn't working. If you enabled that and then you toggled that, it would disable the hide context buttons. Um, no longer the issue now. So, I like having this because it makes the screen whole. So you've, you've not got anything down the bottom. So the synopsis view that I like it, on a big large screen, it looks lovely. Especially without the V bar at the bottom. Home window is the same as the previous. Um, you can just choose what window you want to load into by default. Um, login, auto login is normal. Change menus. That's if you press the back button while it's in the menu. You can add additional sources. So if you have like RAM enabled games or whatever, then you would enter the name here. And when you press the back button, you can just press left or right to cycle and jump straight in. Say if you press B and then scrolling along. <clears throat> I don't think anybody really uses it. It's been there for years. Eh, maybe people do. Um, the scripts, the 480p script loader, uh, the game loader script has been updated. Um, it now does the a Japanese version of one of the games. I can't remember the name of it. But it's like the police car one. It's the... The one where you're racing on the street, it looks, it looks like kind of CG clay modelled cars. Uh, I think it's Midtown Madness but, or something like that, but it's the Japanese version. Uh, anyway, that's got an extra game on it. <clears throat> uh, file Patcher, this I don't really see anybody using, I don't even know if people realise it's there. But this is basically DVD to Xboxes, ACL patching. In Java, eh, no, in JavaScript and Python. Um, I done this because instead of loading up DVD to Xbox, I could just jump in here and I could patch. So, for instance, Token Race Driver Free. If you've got it on the hard drive, you can just pick that, select it, select the folder, and it will patch the checks and the XB. It'll also rename the files. It does everything DVD to Xbox does. Actually, there's more. Um, you can do multiple patches in one file to all different files and stuff like that. You can back up files before you do etc. So there's a few things in here. Um, <clears throat> it also uses the title ID for the game. So you can't patch games that don't have the correct title ID. Because then that would break the game. Uh, view text files. Again, that's been here for a while. Uh, obviously, if you've not seen anything in a couple of years, this you can use to basically view text files. So let's just get into this. So I can use the update log and I can go in and view it. This is handy if you get an error and you want to show me. but Or, you know, you've got a text file that tells you how to do cheats or something. I don't know because there's actually an error. There's debug that you can actually view the error logs. <laughs> So it's you know it's kind of pointless for the log viewing. Um, the X ISO to HDD installer script was updated. Um, it's a lot better now. Functions a lot better. If it finds artwork from the artwork installer, it will automatically install it into the along with the ISO and the attached OXB. Um, this just saves you having to run the <coughs> artwork installer. So if there is no artwork installer being installed then it just won't do anything it'll just you'll get the normal thumbnail that you get out of the xp file and stuff like that start up same as always themes um themes now obviously that's the test build version so the themes are different on the test build um the previews for the ones that i do and maintain have been updated. I like having it consistent so when you cycle through the menu excuse me sorry when you cycle through the menu it just looks nice when you cycle. Um, but anyway you know um, let's enable night mode looks nice. 
So debug, like I was saying, um, you can view the log files. So if there's an error, then you'll see them in here. When you update something, so when you do an update for gamers or emu station, um, these logs are automatically purged or purged, sorry, deleted. Um, so that, you know, I only get the logs for the version that you're running. Uh, the artwork installer doesn't, as you can see. But this is, you know, you would show me this and then you would take a picture and send it to me. Um, if you have no way of uploading the actual log file from, you know, you've no FTP access or something like that. Uh, other thing that I updated a long time ago was the DNS. So you've now got a primary DNS and a secondary DNS. So the primary DNS, if you're using Signia, you must put the primary one as the Insignia DNS, but that will break the downloader. Um, so I had to add the second, secondary DNS, which you can set to your, you know, your router IP or Google or 1111, you know, open DNS, etc. And then that will allow the downloader to start working again. It's just their DNS doesn't allow traffic other than the Xbox Live traffic, you know, which is, you know, obvious. Um, programs, uh, you've seen this menu, you've seen it when I've changed and stuff. Uh, the video switching, um, you get a notification because if you enable this, it will break 480p forced BIOS um, because the way the patch works is it basically just, it changes the region to PAL and stuff like that um, if the game is PAL. Um, so games like Sensible Soccer, um, that doesn't work on NTSC if you enable this and then you select it, it will automatically set it to PAL and it will work. But it will be in, um, God, what are the PAL resolutions? It won't be in progressive PAL, so it won't be PAL 60. It will be just the 50 hertz mode, which looks kind of eh, on a you know modern TV, but it's the only way to play the game. Um, and it saves you having to switch your EEPROM over and back and forth and stuff like that. You know, it just it's, it works. It's better. Um, and it supports all the BIOS. It supports all the new BIOS. It supports CERB BIOS. It supports um, M8. The only BIOS it doesn't, uh, the X2 BIOS, um, I think it supports X3. I don't have one to try. Um, it might, if it's got the same values, um, then it might work. I can't remember if I did that or not. Uh, no. Only one it doesn't really work with is in the BIOS. Um, they do their video stuff slightly different and the patch doesn't work for that properly. Um, the downloader, if you've not used it in a while and you've not seen anything, the down the bottom right you can see, it gives you some information now. So if I update this, so before in the previous video, if you'd seen it, uh, the URL, do URL downloader version was blank. That was not an issue, it's just because obviously this is a clean profile and normally when you set this up as a single profile, you download the updater or you have to download it um, first. And what it does is it sets that value once it's downloaded. So I didn't, you know, didn't click. Um, the other bugs that I came across in the previous video are fixed. Um, <clears throat> just an oversight on my part. So now if we go down, you can see it's version 1.0.37. If you're watching this and you are on an older version of Gamers or MU Station and you didn't update when the grace period, which was about four months ago now, you had two months to update before the Google Drive links were all changed to a new place, um, you will need to download the force update file. Um, it's on my GitHub. Uh, you can just download the URL downloader folder and replace the one on your Xbox and then you go there, you get into that folder and you run the force update and what that will do is that will download the proper file from my previous Google Drive location and then it will update you with all the new links. Um, that's why, if you've noticed, um, if you're using it, that 
it will update twice now from a clean install or an update. Um, the reason being is that if the other Google, if the other links go down, I can always recover. So you can always recover. Worst case, you just have to go down the impact force update. Um, and that's it. It'll download the proper files and you'll get all the links. I had to do that because, you know, it's, it's a fail safe basically that if something happens, we can always recover. Um, these themes, again, these have all been updated for the test build. Uh, when stable goes live, these will all be there. They won't work on previous versions. Um, unfortunately, that's just the joys. You should be running the latest version. Um, people run, you know, like three, four year old versions of gamers for some strange reason. And, you know, I get my downloaders not working, you know, and then I need to talk them through how to fix it, which isn't a big deal. You know, it's very simple to do. But you should always be on the latest version. The latest version for stable is 1.4004. Um, personally, I do recommend updating to 1.4005. The reason being is when this goes stable, you won't need to do anything. It will just all work. Um, so everything you've done in the prep to get there will just all work. And you'll get all the new stuff and whatever I do. Um, the one thing I will say is the resurgent theme is RAM heavy on a 64 megabyte Xbox. Um, there's a lot of PNG files, large images in it. Uh, so that I would recommend for at least a 1 to 8 megabyte Xbox. Um, the reason being is you've got 80 megabytes free once everything's loaded. You know, sometimes more. And even with all the high resolution artwork and scrolling like a lunatic backwards and forwards and getting in and out menus and all different stuff, you still end up with 40 megabytes free. So, you know, you've, you've still got loads. Um, but, I'm, like I said in the previous video, I might put a... Basically, when you install this and you select it in the menu, it will tell you that it recommends at least 128 megabytes worth of RAM. It will work on 64. You just might end up getting some, you know, slower loading icons or something might happen. I don't know. I don't use it. <laughs> um... So anyway, that's really kind of it. Uh, mainly the stuff is back-end stuff. Um, fixes for common problems that were part of XBMC that we just had to live with. One example is the multipaths. Um, now, I don't have it... Oh, I'll talk while I just do it. Multipaths are an issue for programs or games and stuff like that because what they do is XBMC... If you have two folders with the same name on two different partitions, it will consolidate them into one folder. Now, its purpose is meant for um, shares. So, it's, you know, an like external hard drive on a network or multiple hard drives on a network. Then you would select each folder and it will consolidate it all into one folder. But it's only for the files menu. So it doesn't really make sense and uh, it doesn't work in the video nav menus, so video library, music library, stuff like that. But it breaks programs, so it breaks games. Um, it's now fixed. So basically what I've done is if the program database is open, which it always is when you're in the game, the programs menu, it just returns. It basically goes, nap, no idea. And what that means is you can have multiple games. I'll just quickly show you. So, move to compact mode, prefer it. Uh, shift. So, I'm going to copy Homebrew into here. So, oh, why did I name that? Games. Should be Homebrew. Brain fart. Oh, um, also. Oh, that's a nice bit of home. What the hell? Okay. It's 2.22 in the morning. Crying out loud. Um, yes, so if you notice there, the keyboard is query. Um, again, people ask for that. 
And to be perfectly honest, it's actually simpler. Right, so I've copied that into E homebrew, and it's also on the normal homebrew, F homebrew. Now, what would normally happen is, if I'm into homebrew, you would have one icon with no thumbnail, and it would say asteroid at the top. There would be no synopsis information. And if I press A on it, or if I pressed Y, this would be all blank. A would do nothing. So you would end up with basically a dead icon or a dead object in your list. And you couldn't do anything with it because it wouldn't do anything. Uh, that's now fixed. So now you can have multiple games. So if you have multiple games on different partitions, say you have a modder one game, then you can just name it the same folder and fire it on and you'll never have any problems. They both all work. They both pull the synopsis for the correct location. They both launch. They both work. Um, so that's one fix that's been plagued since forever, I guess, when multi-pass were added. Uh, right, so... Um, the artwork installer. That's what I'll show you. Forgot about this, even though I spoke about it. Um, so this has been updated, that's now version 3. It has all the new artwork, it has all the updated synopsis, um, it has artwork for emulators and stuff like that. The emulators you have to manually install um, because they don't have any title IDs. I have no way of pairing them with an emulator because most emulators use the same title ID, either all zeros or some generic one that they just all use, which is annoying. Um, I would need to go in and change every single one or add a override file, and then you would need to install them from the downloader for them to function. If you installed them manually, it wouldn't work. Um, but anyway, so here is where you select options. So if you install the 128 megabyte fan art pack, you will enable it under here. Um, it won't install unless you've got 128 megabytes of RAM because it will basically wreck your Xbox. You end up with no RAM on 64. Um, you know, if you've got a large, if you've got a small list, you know, it might be okay. But if you've got a large list of games, which probably most people will do, it kind of you end up with no RAM. Uh, you know, and it ends up really slow and stuff loading slow and just it's meant for 128 megabyte Xbox. Uh, install preview videos can be done on any version, that's just that. Custom paths, you can go in, and this is for people who have games, for instance, you get into games, um, and this is just a dummy list of games. Um, if you go in here and they had like games A to B, or the folder called A to B, and then uh, D E E, and then F. TG or whatever, or IEP, etc, etc, you would go in, you would select the folder, you pick OK, and it will then be parsed while you're doing it. Um, to reset the folder, you just select and press B. So A then B. Uh, first thing first, people, when you load this up, calibrate your screen. Now what you want is the blue bar all the way around. You don't want any red. Right? So you want blue only and you press A to jump between the points of interest. Alright, so uh, other thing is I've modernized this how it looks. So if I just quickly install well, it's not going to install, it's going to skip everything. But you'll see that after so many after like 10 seconds it will fade. And the reason it does this is because most people nowadays are probably using OLEDs. Um, and even though OLEDs in this day and age don't suffer from burning, you know, they've got the pixel shift and protection and stuff like that, it's still nice to just fade out of it. Because when the artwork behind it changes, the actual text and everything else will change with it. So it will change slightly, which means the pixel won't stay the same colour constantly. Um, you know, it's just simplified. Um, I think it's nicer. The fan art in the back will cycle every 10 seconds now instead of 5. Uh, this improves the speed to install stuff again. Um, if you're overwriting stuff, so for instance if you pick 
skip games of artwork. If you just turn that off, it will then delete the previous one and replace it with the new stuff. This takes a lot longer than it would be from a clean install. Um, so if somebody who's installing this for the first time, it will just fire through quick. If you've already ran it before and you're updating all the old artwork, then what will happen is, is it'll take a while. It could, I mean, it can depend on how many games you've got. It can take up to like 45 minutes. Um, a full collection of games will take up probably that. If they've already got artwork, if they don't, it's a lot quicker. Uh, but anyway, yes, that's the artwork install, the newest version. And now I'll just load into um, Emu Station by holding the B button because I use Dash Loader. So, Emu Station, I've been updating as well um, in the background. This now has a lot, a lot of changes. It now supports SD resolutions. Um, so, if you are running on you know, if you're not using the component cables or HDMI, stuff like that, um, it will use SD resolution. Now, it's meant for the CRT televisions. It's not meant really for, you know, uh, normal LCDs or OLEDs. If you're running SD resolutions and you have the... You're not using a CRT come in and turn this off. What this will do is it will force it to use the 720p assets but and orientation and you know placement of objects and stuff like that. It will use the 720p files, the default files. Um, if you're using a CRT this is enabled by default so you don't need to worry about it but people who are using SD resolutions disable this if you're not using a CRT. Um, Default last systems, it's all the kind of same, but now it's all, you know, you've got your disabled settings and you've got your enabled settings. I separated them all out because um, it was just, you know, made it look nicer. Um, customization, we have a new menu which has changed theme colors. This will only work on themes that support, you know, that have different colors. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, the carousel effect. Now, I've noticed that people who use EmuStation who upload videos to YouTube never change these. So, by default, they're all on instant. And what that means is when you press left and right, it's just it's jarring. Um, the slide effect or the fade effect for the carousel effect is nice. And it does a nice wee swipe across the screen or it does a wee fade out and in. The background effect can be instant or fade, or um, scroll, you know, it'll swipe across. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, oh, sort by system names. Um, I forgot I had that. What that does is that will sort the home menu, the home screen, by systems. So, for instance, right now it's alphabetical, but say you want all the Mega Drive or Sega stuff to be next to each other, then you enable this and they'll all be next to each other. Um, I like it alph alphabeticalized, but some people out there might like it where it's sorted by system names. Um, so let's use the newest theme I've basically added, recreated. Um, now, this theme I really like. Um, I just quickly say there's a ports menu and there's also a homebrew menu. People wanted a homebrew menu, you've got one. Um, this theme supports multiple colours, also supports different home screens. Um, so this is the basically your default home screen you would see. But if you go in and you change this to say fade, now this can be anything you want but it just looks better on fade. It's the background effect which is the one that changes how it looks. So, if we change it to slide, you'll now see that it's changed. And it's now like this. Which is a lot nicer. Um, and if we go in, you can see the game list for this game. Um, all games are now sorted by alphabetical order, apart from some of the CD games. Um, I've not got around to doing them yet. But all games that use ROMs uh, all get sorted alphabetically. 
Um, these will be added at some point, um, but it's not a high priority. So, quickly show you. Actually, let's see. Have I got one for instant? Can't remember. Don't think of the. No. So, back to slide. So, let's change a color. So, I've got multiple colors for this. Um, personally, I like Steam OS or the SNES version. So, we'll change that. And so, as you can see, it changes the menus and the settings menu doesn't change, that's always the same. Um, so, let's see, let's look at Final Burn Legends. Um, you'll see down the bottom left, it also tells you the the system name. So, like usual, press the Y button. If there's a preview, play the preview. Back out. Um, so, down the bottom there you see Final Burn Legends. Now, that shows you the system name. That was a new thing that I added. Um, that allowed me to sort the home screen by systems. So, each system has the correct name for them. And if you sort by system name, it'll be, you know, I'll just show you. So if you look down the bottom, they're now all sorted by system. So we've got, we've got all the Sega systems next to each other, stuff like that. So, you know, it's a nice feature. Personally, I don't use it. Um, let's set this back to, you know, let's set it to Steam OS, and then we're back to just alphabetical. So as you can see, Nintendo is under F for Famicom. So uh, scanner options have been updated. Um, again, all the menus have been updated just to be more streamlined. So as you can see, um, you know, if you want resources, you can enable resources and you can ignore the the. So just ignore them and it'll sort them by alphabetical order. Um, you know, uh, advanced settings, not really much change there. Um, you can still run the artwork and stuff from here if you want. Same way you can do in gamers. You don't actually need to launch it. Sound settings, uh, same. Uh, you get applications menu, that's just the same. Um, and that's really kind of So it's mainly just back end changes on Emu Station. So let's go back into gamers. Uh, and then I'll round this video up because that's basically everything I've done. Um, a lot of the stuff I've done is just basically back end stuff. Uh, improvements to make stuff more streamlined, better. Um, nicer to the eye um, and you know just all around better user experience because um, I really I don't use this I don't actually play the Xbox I just make the dashboard you know <laughs> that's what I enjoy doing um, so you know no, it sounds silly you know that I don't actually play Xbox games I don't have any games on this um, it's just all fake lists uh, for testing purposes so, you know, I don't actually play anything. I just I enjoy doing the coding and enjoy doing changing stuff and improving it and adding stuff and making it better. That's where I get enjoyment. Um, it's my stress reliever. I come here when I'm stressed. I code away. I fix stuff. I improve stuff. Um, so if I had a really happy life, you know, I was hunky dory, you wouldn't have any of this. So, <laughs> thanks stress. Thanks life. Uh, anyway, I forgot to say. You can edit the profile from this menu. Um, in the previous versions, you couldn't. So you can now edit them if you want. The saves script is no longer used, so profiles don't use their own saves. If you used that previously, um, when you run this version, it will restore your backup, um, which is under E, and it will rename your current one to whatever your profile name was. So if you lose all your saves, go into the ePartition and you'll see a UDATA folder with your profile name. 
you just want to delete the original UData folder and rename that one to UData, and that'll fix your issue. Because um, somebody had that issue. Um, personally, most people, or personally, I don't use the script anymore. My kids are now at, well, one's nearly an adult, another one's 17. So, you know, when I started making this, I think they were like eight. Uh, so it's been a long, long time. Um, so they don't use the Xbox anymore. So that that's why I essentially became gamers, because it was more adults using it than it was my kids. Uh, another thing, anyway, another thing you can do, you can press the start button and you can change color. So people wanted to add different colors, you know, or different wallpapers for the login screen. So you can do that. So you can just go and pick an image. Uh, let's put a nice gradient. There you go. So you can have a custom wallpaper for your lock screen, or your login screen, sorry. Um, obviously, at certain times of the year, uh, you will get specific um, animations and wallpapers. So for instance, Halloween, you'll get pumpkins and spiders moving up and down and stuff like that, and a nice background. Uh, Christmas, you will get snow. Uh, Easter, you will get a bunny rabbit that hops across the screen constantly. And you can obviously set up birthdays. So you can choose, you know, so for instance, if you want a happy birthday from your Xbox, you put in your date of birth. And on that day, when you load it up, it'll have happy birthday with balloons. <laughs> so <clears throat> that, wa Chris, that was for my kids. Um, they don't use the Xbox anymore, but I left that stuff in because I thought it was quite good. And all the that will work for like the next 10 years before I need to update the dates for that stuff because it's date based so anyway um hopefully this video you can hear me a lot better or, oh, i assume you would have been out um or you've, uh, your tv's blaring but you know thanks for watching um that's basically it i just do this in my spree, spare time and um, feeling stressed i come and code uh, fix stuff improve stuff break stuff um, but anyway, hopefully you can hear the video properly. I hope you enjoyed the video, and you know, enjoy the Xbox. You know, it's an old console, but it's still a. It's my favourite console. Uh, well, Dreamcast is my favourite console, but the Xbox is very close. Um, mainly because I can do that stuff on it, but the Dreamcast is my favourite console. That's just I love that console. Anyway, thanks for watching and. If you download it, then if you find any issues, let me know. Um, you know, you can get me on Discord, you can get me on Twitter, you can get me on basically anywhere. I'm on most Xbox stuff. So it'll be under JC Rocky 5 or just Rocky 5. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm away. It's my bedtime because it's now 20 to 3 in the morning. So have fun if you install it. If you update to the test build, I hope you you like the new stuff. Um, but please install the new artwork first because if you don't have the stuff shown, that's not really my issue. And I can't remember if I spoke about the higher res artwork. So I'm sure I did, but this has been 43 minutes now I've been talking. But if I didn't, on 120 megabytes worth of RAM, it will use higher res artwork. If you don't have the latest artwork installer installed and run and all your artwork updated, you can go into the settings and turn it off so that it will use the lower res artwork that you already have. Um, but obviously, some views will still not have artwork because they use specific images now. Um, but anyway, if I blew your eardrums there, I apologise. Um, I'm away. So, thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Ta-da.